My name is John Pucher, and I'm a professor of urban planning and public policy at Rutgers University. I had the pleasure of doing a survey of various infrastructure measures, policies, and programs uh, implemented by cities around the world to increase cycling and to make it safer. And we published this in this journal, Preventive Medicine, in the January 2010 issue. And we had a number of interesting findings, which might be useful, actually, for those of you out there trying to increase bicycling. It turns out, number one, that it is, in fact, possible to increase cycling significantly, even in very large cities, even in cities that are currently very car-oriented. We found it was possible, for example, in Portland to increase sixfold the amount of cycling in Portland. Even in a freezing city such as Minneapolis, a fourfold increase in levels of cycling over a period of two decades. But one of the key findings we had, there were, we found many, many cities that were implementing a package of policies that was really necessary to implement not just bike paths and bike lanes, but educational programs, promotional programs, bike sharing programs, parking supply. It was a whole range of programs that were integrated with each other and therefore supported each other. And when you do that, you get a much greater impact than implementing any one policy. So the really good news is it is possible to increase cycling significantly, even in a very car-oriented society, uh, even in cities with no history of cycling at all. And the, implementing this package of measures is really the, the most important way to do it. We also found that cycling provides tremendously important health benefits, both directly and indirectly. For the cyclist herself or himself, it means that additional physical activity, getting out there, getting the exercise, using up calories and so forth, Incredibly, all a number of studies that we surveyed show that there were very large health benefits of cycling for the individual, but also for society as a whole because of less air pollution, less traffic danger, less congestion, and, and less global warming, and so forth and so on. In addition to which, something that's really important, and that is many people have the notion that cycling is extremely dangerous. Well, what we found in all of our studies, and we did a thorough review of all of the public health and transportation literature, and what they show is that the health benefits of cycling far exceed the traffic dangers of cycling. And I think that's a really, really important message because it means it really is worthwhile to promote cycling, even at its current state, that cycling provides these very valuable health benefits way in excess of the traffic dangers. But we also found a number of studies showing how to make cycling safer. So we shouldn't just assume that we should accept the current level of cycling safety. We want to make it safer. And the way to make it safer, there are a number of ways. I'll mention just a few. But one of the ways clearly is providing separate cycling facilities that protect cyclists from motor vehicles, such as bike lanes, bike paths, bike boxes, and also very importantly, the traffic calming of residential neighborhoods. This means reducing speeds to 20 or 25 miles an hour, and both through laws, through signs saying speed limit 20 to 25 miles an hour, but also through infrastructure measures. It could be speed bumps, traffic circles, um, raised uh, intersections, and so forth to force cars to slow down. That the combination of the separate facilities, the bike lanes and the bike paths, plus the traffic calming of residential neighborhoods is a really key strategy for increasing the cycling safety, reducing the stress of cycling, because most people just do not want to cycle in mixed traffic with fast-moving cars, with trucks. It's, it's noisy, it's polluting, it's just not very stressful or pleasant. And this is particularly the case, what we found, for women, for seniors, and for children that they simply are not going to cycle on busy arterials. And if you want to really make your cycling policy inclusive and get as broad a spectrum of your population to cycle as possible, what's really necessary is to provide those separate facilities uh, because it gives them that protection, that separation from the motor vehicle traffic.